I'm a little bit nervous about this video. I don't really know how it's going to go. My plan is I'm gonna be working with a brand new model, someone I've never worked with before. And I wanted to make a video about the experience that also applies if it's your very first time working with a model. I'm gonna show you everything that's already happened, all of my tips on how to make it a success, hopefully it hasn't happened yet, and then show you the final results. I'm Gavin Hoey, you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. Click on the subscribe button, click on the bell icon, you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. New stuff pretty much every single day. So, let's get a model in, let's get the lights set, let's get shooting. Yeah. So to help me out today, I've got the awesome Cherry. Cherry is going to be the model for this shoot and believe it or not this is actually our very first shoot together. We've never worked together before. However, because of how these things get edited you may have seen Cherry in a previous Adorama TV video. Now Cherry is an experienced model and when it comes to working with your first model that is the best thing you can do. Invest in someone's experience because you will get better pictures as a result. But the planning for this didn't happen just now. For that, we need to go back around about a week. So let's just turn the clock backwards a little bit. Diddle doo, diddle doo, diddle doo. <laughs> Welcome along to what I guess is the beginning of the portrait photography process. And at this stage, there's two things I need to work out. Who's gonna be my model? And what sort of look or style am I going to go for? Now, it doesn't matter which order this happens in. It could be that you find a model first and then work out a look for them, or I'm doing it the other way around. I'm gonna work out a look first and then find a model to, to match. So to do this, I've made a mood board. These are really useful because it gives you some guidance. It gives you something to share with the model, and in this case, a makeup artist. I use Pinterest. It's a really useful website. Now I've done that, I need to actually find a model. Where do you find models? So if it's your first ever time working with any model ever, don't, if you can avoid it, work with a family friend or just somebody who wants to have a go. It's well worth paying, and I do mean paying, for someone's experience. So that might mean it's an agency model. It could mean one of the websites that put photographers and models together, there's a few of those. Or in my case, I'm gonna try social media. I'm going to put an Instagram story up and let's see what happens. Here we go. That actually worked really well. I've had several replies over the last couple of days. I've got in contact with everybody because you never know when you're going to work with another model. But the one that fits the bill for the look I'm going for is Cherry. We've gone through where we're going to be, when we're going to be shooting, what she needs to bring to the shoot, what I'm bringing, how much we're paying her. All of those are now covered and in writing so everybody knows what's going on. Yeah, that's it. There's nothing more for me to do. A couple of days and we'll be, we'll be off. This is really exciting. So Cherry is here. She's actually through having her makeup done at the moment with Charlotte, the makeup artist. But that reminds me, if you've never worked with a model and there's makeup involved, you'll need to factor in that time. And it takes way longer than you imagine. But that's not time that's wasted. You can use that to set up your kit, test it all out. But more importantly, factor in time to get to know your model. Remember, models are people, they're human beings. Treat them like people and you'll get a lot more out of your shoot. So that's how we got here. If you're new to working with models, it's essential really for your first shoot to keep things as simple as you can. So for this shoot, all I'm gonna do is go with a single light, which is gonna be the strip box up there. I'm gonna go with black and white portraits just to keep the color problems out of the way. And I'm gonna remember the fundamentals because it's very easy to forget those. So the first thing I'm gonna do is test shots. So first things first, I've got my camera is in manual mode. I've dialed in some settings. I'm going with my flash sync speed, F4 as an aperture, ISO 200, native ISO for Olympus cameras. I'm gonna take a picture without any flash firing to see if I've got control of the light in the room. Okay, Cherry, here we go, first shot. Most important shot of the day, no flash, no picture, tick. 
Next, I want to make sure that my light is in the correct position. So I've metered this out already. Let's take a test shot and see how this looks. It's really important at this stage, if you're taking a test shot, to let your model know this is a test, this is a test shot, Jerry, okay? Here we go. So test shot, save your best poses for later. That's great. So in my test shot, I can see quite clearly the lighting looks good, but Cherry's eyes are a little bit dark. So for this lighting to work, I need to advise Cherry, Cherry, can you look towards the light for me? But being an experienced model, Cherry already knew that. Here we go. Great, and that looks much better. Now we have some light in Cherry's eyes. That looks really good. So that's my test shots done. I'm gonna try and take as many pictures here without changing anything, because the more you can take without moving something, the more correct photos you'll have, the more pictures you'll get for your portfolio. So let's take a few shots and see what we get. Cherry, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Now, when it comes to posing your model, the temptation might be to start telling your model exactly how to pose, where to put their elbows, where to put their hands. And Cherry is an experienced model. And there's a reason I'm working with Cherry is because I don't have to tell her those things. In fact, you're much better off for your first shoot letting the model do what they do best, modeling. If there's something that you want to change, suggest the change. Guide your model, don't direct your model. It's a much easier way to work when you're starting out. Take a little baby step backwards, just a little baby step, perfect, thank you. Just get you into the light, that's it. If you can look straight down the lens. One of the best things you can do as a photographer to really get a good shoot going is communication with your model. But when you're talking, make sure everything you say is positive. Even if it's going horribly wrong on your camera, you want the model to feel happy, relaxed, and feel like they're doing a great job. Here's what you shouldn't do. Okay, Cherry, let's just... Um... Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, damn it, no. Hang on, that's awful. That's really, really bad. Don't do that, okay? That's just gonna ruin your shoot immediately. Here's what you should do. Okay, Jerry, here we go, let's try that. Okay, yeah, pretty good. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna change something. Okay, here we go, let's try that. Here we go, Cherry. Oh yeah, that's brilliant. That, fantastic. Okay, can you just move your hair a little bit? Give your hair a little bit of a, a move around. That's good. Brilliant. Look over towards me. Excellent, there you go. Nailed it, superb. And so on. Positive is the way to go when you want to get good results. Remember, not every picture is gonna be brilliant. You just need one or two good ones. At some point, you're gonna run out of ideas. It happens to everybody, and even an experienced model like Cherry, she can't be expected just to stand there and keep doing different poses forever. So what do you do when you get stuck? Well, there's a couple of things you could do. You could refer back to your mood board for inspiration. That can work really well. What I often do is, on the back of my camera, in the little flippy bit at the back, I'll write little notes to myself so only I can see them. That can be really handy. Or you could move. Now that might mean moving your feet for a different angle. It could be, in this case, moving the light. So I've still got the same Explore 300. It's still the same softbox. Now all I've done is I've just put it over the top of Cherry rather than to the side. This is gonna dramatically change the lighting. But once again, I need to do a test shot to see how it works. So I've already metered this out. Let's take a test shot to see how it actually looks. So Cherry, this is a test shot. You can just look at me for a second. Fantastic. Now when Cherry looks at me, this lighting, it gives fairly good light on Cherry, but you can see her eyes once again are really deep shadows. 
So we know the solution for this. The solution is the same as before. Ask Cherry to look towards the light. So Cherry, and you may have noticed she was doing that before I asked. Again, experience model paying off. Cherry, if you can just look up towards the, the top edge of my softbox here. Here we go. And as soon as she does that, we have light in her eyes. It looks so much more exciting. All we need to do is to remind Cherry as we're going through, just to keep looking up every now and again. But other than that, let's take a few shots like this. So Cherry, are you ready? Okay, here we go. Models aren't mind readers, so it's really important as you're going through the shoot that you show your models what you're shooting, either on the back of the camera, or even better, if you can tether in, you can actually have a nice big screen where they can really see what's going on. Allowing your model to see which parts of them are in shot and which parts aren't will really help them to give you the best results. Can you keep your knees together but your feet apart? So knees tightly together, that's it. And then, yeah, maybe on your toes. And we're gonna try and get some symmetry into this as well. Perfect. Okay, that's great. So another thing you can do when you get a little bit stuck is ask your model for some advice. They've had more pictures taken of them than you've done of them, so they know what works. And Cherry suggested beauty lighting. So that's what I've set up here. Let's take a few shots like this, see what we get. Okay, Cherry, here we go. You can sort of ruffle your hair through your fingers, that's it. Once you've got a rhythm going, it's important to leave it going. If the shots are going well, great. If they're not going so well, suggest some changes, but don't suddenly stop and start and stop and start. You'll lose the rhythm and you won't get such good results. And then there's another thing you can do. Bring something random in. It could be a random prop, it could be a random piece of clothing, or it could be a random Sam with a random leaf blower. Yeah, that's quite nice actually. It's warm in here today, so. We're gonna get Sam to blow Cherry's hair around. That's gonna really randomize the shoot a lot. Let's take some pictures like this. Cherry, are you ready? Okay, here we go. A long, really long time ago when I was shooting uh, Ilford XP2 film, there's one to look up. A more experienced portrait photographer told me there's no point putting any film in your camera for the first 15 minutes of any shoot. And you kind of think, yeah, that makes sense because when you look at these pictures, the early ones, I mean, they're okay, but there's definitely improvement over time. Cherry relaxed, I relaxed, we had a bit of banter, everything worked better to the point that when you look at the first shot compared to the last shot, you'd think we're looking at two completely different shoots. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. We have new stuff pretty much every single day. And of course, click on the, hang on, it's back here.
Here we go. Oh, yeah, there it is. Click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.